Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I know, I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, I understand, but 10 days in jail? Really? Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. A lot of people have been asking about Class F airspace, so I spent some time researching it, and here's where I ended up. Let's check out what I found out. Class F airspace is a strange grouping of three kinds of special use areas of airspace that exist only in Canada. You mention Class F to an American pilot and they'll think you're mental, or Canadian, or, or both. All three of these types of airspace are defined in the Designated Airspace Handbook, or DAH, which identifies every single one of them by exact location and altitude. And each of the 169 individual areas has an identification number. The first kind of area is called Special Use Danger Area, and by that clever name you can guess that these are dangerous areas to fly. Fortunately, all 17 of them are well off the east and west coasts, so probably aren't anywhere near where you're going to be flying your drone. All the Danger Class F areas have identification numbers starting with CYD. D for Danger. The second kind of area is called Special Use Restricted Area. These ones you really do need to worry about as a drone flyer. There are 94 Class F restricted areas across Canada. They are typically around military facilities, prisons, and a few other special places, including Parliament Hill, Rideau Hall, the Confederation Bridge, and Niagara Falls. Restricted Class F areas have identification numbers that start with CYR, R for restricted. By the way, there are also 10 detention facilities in Quebec that have basically temporary restricted areas around them. These restricted areas are specifically called out in the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations in Rule 90114. No pilot shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft in Class F special use restricted airspace as specified in the designated airspace handbook unless authorized to do so by the person specified for that purpose in the standard. And as it says, you must contact the authorized person for the specific restricted area in order to fly there. These are all listed out in the designated airspace handbook, and in most cases the Drone Pilot Canada app will also tell you the number to call. And of course, this is an advanced operation, so you must have your advanced operations pilot certificate in order to fly in a restricted zone. The third area of Class F airspace is totally different. These are called Special Use Advisory Airspaces and are designated by the identifiers starting with CYA. A for advisory. You're catching on. These areas can have one or more of the following operations taking place in them when they're active. Acrobatic, as in air, acrobatic aircraft, an aircraft test area, hang gliding, military operations, parachuting, soaring, and training. And after the identifier for the airspace, one or more of these letters is listed. For the most part, you're permitted to fly an RPAS in these Class F advisory areas as long as you follow the regular rules and stay on the lookout for these operations. The danger here is that it could be very difficult to detect silent aircraft like hang gliders or sailplanes, or fast-moving military or acrobatic aircraft. For the most part, these CYA zones are treated as Class G uncontrolled airspace, even when they're active. Some, but not all, have a contact number and the authorizing agency for that particular area. If there's a contact number, I would strongly recommend you call before you fly. Now there are a few exceptions to the general rule that CYA zones are Class G, and I spotted these when browsing through the DAH one night. So the three that I spotted are CYA 102 near Black Rock, BC, which is near Victoria. It's a Joint Task Force Pacific training area, and when it's active, it's not Class G, but it's Class E airspace, so that's controlled airspace. So you better Stay clear of that one, I would recommend. I don't think you want these guys <laughs> dropping in on your house after they figure out where your drone is from. 
The second one is also near Victoria. It's CYA 110 and the H indicates uh, hang gliding. So this is the Vancouver Island Hang Gliding Club and they have special club rules in effect when the club is active. And again, there's a phone number to call for that one. The biggest one is CYA 731 in Goose Bay, well, near Goose Bay, Newfoundland. It's absolutely enormous, as you can tell from this map, and it's a military training zone. In the DAH, it says, amongst other things, high speed, low level jet traffic operating in all weather conditions. Once again, probably not a great spot to be flying your drone. If you do happen to live around there or do want to drone there for whatever reason, I really strongly recommend you call those guys up before you do so. Before wrapping this up, I thought I'd show you some interesting statistics around the different kinds of airspace we just talked about. I derived these numbers from the DAH and um, therefore all the Class F airspace broken down by the different kinds and then for the advisory ones I've further broken them down into the different um, flavors if you like of, of activities that can be occurring there and of course any given uh, space can have more than one of these so the, the astute student will notice that some of these add up to more than the, the total because of that reason. Now I've only um, tallied up the numbers for Class F airspace that starts at the surface because we're only interested in drone flying here. Uh, there are other restricted zones and advisory zones and I don't think there's any other danger zones but um, certainly there's uh, CYR and CYA zones that start at higher altitudes. I haven't counted those here. So as I mentioned all of the danger zones are on the uh, east and west coast and in fact all these Nova Scotia ones are in one sort of contiguous area off of Nova Scotia. Restricted zones, there's lots in Quebec and Ontario and quite a few in Alberta and British Columbia as well. And in addition to the 22 in Quebec, there are these 10 more or less uh, temporary restricted areas that are around prisons or what they call detention facilities under this uh, strange umbrella called the AIP 2019. In terms of advisory areas, it's interesting to note that of the 58 across Canada, um, 23, so a, a huge percentage of them, are in British Columbia. And uh, in turn, many of those are hang gliding facilities. Kind of an interesting uh, note. And the other thing that's kind of curious is that in Eastern Canada, there are very few of these advisory areas. Okay, interesting stats. Well, there you go. Now you understand why I'm behind bars. I spent way too much time looking into this Class F airspace stuff. Come on, honey, let me out of here. I won't do it again. I'll try to shorten these videos a little bit. Yeah, at least some water. Oh well, at least I have internet access in prison. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below and leave me a comment. Talk to you next time. No, seriously, even just some water.